And we're back. Welcome to the Smart to Noise Ratio Pro Audio Podcast. And this is a momentous one, guys. Episode 10. Hmm. Round of applause. <laughs> Slow clap. Yeah. All right. Don't worry. I'll fly something in later. I'm sure I got something in the Foley folder. I can make it sound like that was a huge hit. So, yeah, not, not a huge milestone, but one nonetheless. It's been 10 weeks. We've managed to get together once a week and put something out there. So I'm pretty pumped about that. And a few people are actually turning out to listen. So it's all good. Uh, this week I have with me, uh, well, by the way, I'm your host, John Dayton. Uh, to my right is my partner in crime, uh, business, uh, Gordon Wood. Business? Crime? <laughs> are we? Are you the crime lord? Just Chris keep the Brown. payment coming, and I'll make sure Knuckles and Bruno don't have to come around and break his nose. Okay, okay. And to his right is Jedi warrior Anthony Kuzabucky. Hello. Daughters, lock up your mothers. <laughs> My wife says the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing is, they're both in their 20s still. So. <laughs> She's got one year left. <laughs> Oh, that's right. You're the one guy around her. <laughs> married married a woman much older than himself. Mm. Forgotten that detail. I'm trying to equal out the table. So yeah. my wife, <laughs> my wife is of course much younger than I. Actually, not really. We're the same age this month. Uh, well, anyway, we're uh, a little bit shorthanded tonight. Uh, Carl wasn't able to make it. He had sadly a wake to attend to. So uh, our thoughts and prayers are with him tonight as he's dealing with that. Um, and we almost had Brandon, but rehearsal went an hour longer than we expected it to, so he had to go home and go to bed because he has to get up and do engineering type thing, mechanical launch, launch rockets. Oh, yeah, mechanical! Like, come NASA. on. <laughs> hey, he's got to be pushing a pencil around, making it look like he's doing something tomorrow. And so I got a sick man's in 480. So, <laughs> uh, well, anyway, um, I was just going to go around the circle first of all and just talk about what we're working on, just because occasionally that's interesting. Uh, I know Anthony had a, a decent project. Gordon just booked some summer gigs, and I just got picked up for a neat one. So I'll I'll go last. Why don't you, Anthony, first of all, uh, tell us what you and Mr. Spoon were working on last weekend, because that's not something, you, <laughs> not an experience you get every day. So uh, it was it was a couple weeks ago now, but um, my, one of my friends that I used to play with, Edward, called me and said he wanted to just do a do a jazz session we've got a, a gorgeous nine and a half foot Kawhi grand piano um at the church that i work at so we set up that uh we almost had rick james bass player jerry levinson come in but uh from what i've heard jerry tends to forget things and he was already triple booked for the day so he couldn't make it out <laughs> uh so we had this angry little jewish kid named ben come in and play upright bass um a nasty sax player just blows the bob seeger guy out of the water um and this guy named Teaspoon coming in and playing drums. Now, Teaspoon is... Uh, I know Teaspoon from way back. <laughs> right, yeah. John John was on the road with Teaspoon for a while. Um, Teaspoon's more of a tablespoon size. Um, he's, he's a little bit bigger. He's a nice... Teaspoon's uh, kiddie pool size. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, from what you were telling me earlier, I think, isn't that that big wooden spoon that was hanging on the wall that you were yeah, afraid the, your mom was going <laughs> to eat? Tea, teaspoon is, is a large individual, but he plays a real tiny drum set. He... Uh, I've never seen it before, but it's a 16-inch kick drum. So he's like the guy from Blues Traveler. Yeah, but he's better because okay. it's not white. Um, uh, when I saw him, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, I, I hate Blues Traveler. Um, <laughs> but uh, we got together and uh, just decided that we were going to have a jazz session. We played for um, probably about an hour and a half, and I have never played with a drummer with, with as much feel as this guy. He uh, he used to play for the Christopher Hopper band when John was on the road with them. Actually, no, it was a it was a one off event that I got okay. to do with him, but it was three days of paradise. Okay, so he played with him, um, and after that he came back. He uh, he's a clinician for a couple drum companies. He's sponsored by almost anybody he wants to get sponsored by. Um, he uh, he went and did some of the Disney cruises, which sounds like a joke, but if you get in as a musician on a Disney cruise, you're you're pretty good. Sounds like money. Oh, yeah, tons of money. He did, he did actual Disney World, then he did the cruise lines. Then he came back and uh, picked up some side work uh, down on Broadway, playing drums in the pit orchestra for West Side Story um, for the revival of that. Did uh, the Michael Jackson um, tribute tour and got to play a couple shows with the Black Eyed Peas on a whim. So he's he's not he's no joke. He's a, he's a pretty serious drummer, but one of the nicest guys I ever got to meet. Um and he still has a snare drum stand and a cymbal stand of mine, so I need to I had to call him and get those back. But um just one of the one of the coolest sessions I've got to sit in on 
I got to record and they, they asked me to play too. So getting to play with all those guys was really, um, it, it was a pleasure. I don't think I've had more fun playing with a group of people and been that relaxed, um, in a long time, if ever. Awesome. So yeah, that's, I heard some of the tracks from that session and it was pretty mind blowing. It was some sweet stuff to hear. Uh, Gordon, how's the summer looking for live stuff? Uh, well, it's not quite as busy as last year, but in some ways that's a good thing. My partner here is actually upright and vertical this year as opposed to being flat on his back. And uh, <laughs> That made the festival so, yeah, made, made the festival so much fun on drugs. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was. He started talking crazy things, and, well, now he's doing them, so apparently he's actually just playing crazy. I had a, uh, it was my spirit journey. Thank you, Vicodin. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I've uh, pretty well got the rig to a point where as I'm uh, comfortable with it, there's still a couple things I'd like to add to it, but it's kind of nice finally being able to see the end of that gas tunnel for all you that don't know what gas is. It's gear acquisition syndrome. If you don't have it now, you probably will after listening to us for five minutes. Yeah. So, anyway, it's finally coming to an end. I'm getting comfortable. Just want to start doing more shows now. Got to get to our... Uh, kid members here into uh, starting to try and book things because uh, John and I are getting increasingly busy trying to keep ahead of the technology as well as doing these podcasts and help other people out and just learning our craft and just getting better at that every day. So just got to get more work. And it's it's funny because when it rains, it pours. You know, like It seems like the only stuff we get asked to do is on a day where you know, like somebody's going to be out of town, somebody else is already double booked, it, you know, it's... All of us are, you know, I work in the audio realm, but I'm still nine to five in it, so it's it's tough. Um, and, and then, you know, we have long stretches where nobody's booking anything, and we wonder, like, Ugh, are we ever going to go out again? Like, am I still going to remember how to do this? <laughs> yeah, um, and of course, I was trying to get people to learn new things and kind of take on more responsibility. It's just like we're, we're almost kind of like the nervous parent not wanting to hand it off, but at the same time, we have to, but then we need the other people to actually pick up the ball and run with it. Instead of dropping it, kicking it across the floor, <laughs> catching it, and then having the wind blow it away from them. <laughs> so, <laughs> spilling spilling something on it in the process. Right? Oh, yeah, that would be really bad. Um, so, yeah, there's there's all of that stuff. Actually, I caught a cool one. I'm not going to go into it too much until I actually know how it's going to work out. But a, a cousin of mine who uh, works down in the New York City area uh, was an actor primarily early on. I was doing some other stuff like blogging and, and networking. Um, but still has a lot of friends in the biz, uh, recommended me to somebody who called me. Now, this is going to be six hours away from me, but for a gig, like, pretty, like, close enough to just call it Philly, um, to do something, uh, it's basically like if The Office were a Broadway show with a lot more singing, and, uh, they're doing, they do it at, at corporate events. They were off-Broadway for a while, now they're, they're traveling, um, and the money's pretty good, so they're, I'm, I'm going to make, uh, nigh on to two weeks' pay for what's going to add up to be basically a very long Wednesday for me. I'm going to drive down with a little bit of Sounds gear. like you need a raise, John. Yeah. Um, but actually, I, I said that as a tie into this. Um, we did some shootouts recently with, uh, well, New York guys make, they just make buckets of cash. It's actually, well, it's yeah. the audio equivalent of a P, of a, like a PW job, a prevailing <laughs> wage. Yeah. Um, oh, that was on that today, thank God. <laughs> but anyway, they're, they're kind of in the process. This group is in the process of getting fit out with their own self-powered stuff, and they're, uh, they're getting the JBL three-way it's like a 15 a four or a six and a horn db technologies uh, the db technologies i i'm telling them about the q i think they're going to get qscs for wedges i'm actually taking my k10s along to use for monitors and they're going to see what they like how they like those because those would do double duty when they play like this room's going to hold i don't know 350 or something yeah. um they do a lot of 100 seat rooms a pair of k10s you know with, yeah. with singers who can really sing yeah. that's sang with an s-a-n-g but it's not past tense um <laughs> You don't need much. You just need a little bit of help getting some of those consonants and some of those quieter passages out to the back of the room. Um, but that's kind of cool. I'm sort of getting to help them design their first rig, and Anthony and I are going to go down there next Wednesday and, and shoot it out for them and tell them what else they need to buy. Uh, but on the, the self-powered speaker thing, I don't think we have brought it up. Gordon brought over, uh, he has an EV-15-2, and I've got some QSC 10-inch uh, 10 10-2s. We uh, set them up. Uh, we had blown them out in somebody's backyard before. We didn't get a chance to really put them through their paces. Uh, we set up a little mixer so we could actually take some some level meter readings and got out the DB meter. Threw them out on stage where I work. Went out about 60 feet into the house. And I think the most telling numbers, uh, like the near field stuff, I mean, it was more just what your ears were hearing. Like, oh, this one right at, you know, when you're just kissing the limit light, this one sounds a little better than that one. Uh, this one's louder than that one. Like in the near field, it was really easy to tell. But out in the house, uh, from 60 feet out, 
uh, his EVs were a good 6 dB louder than than my little K10s. And, uh, you know, the 15-inch cone really does make a lot of difference as far as the mids uh, and the lows, too. I mean, it was we, we flipped them down and set them up in, like, a wedge configuration on stage, and his was... Yeah, I could only tell John's were on just because of a little bit of extra high end that they had. Other than that, it was like, well, yeah, that was when we were running click, both click. at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah a couple on, on top of the stage, the resonance was really amazing. Um, his were really kicking out the jams, and that was one. Yeah, um, and then we also still on the self powered tip. Um, we paired up uh, a pair of my. I have some little Yorkville self powered subs that are based on a pair of tens. Uh, sound really nice. They go down to about fifty. Um, did those with Gordon's EV 15 twos on top and my little 10 twos for wedges uh, did a fully self-powered gig. We had to fly into a, a beer tent at a local little lawn fete or carnival or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, as soon as yeah, the, the old set up in 32 minutes. Or yeah. Less. Oh yeah. I think we had sound coming out. Like, we were basically ready to rock in about 23 minutes and yep. it just went together beautifully. And I think we only got slowed down because we were trying to mess with some lights too. Yeah. Um, but that worked great. Uh, volume levels were respectable. I mean, we kept it under 100. Band sounded great, got rave reviews. And, and the people, this was the telling thing. The, uh, the people pulling the taps yeah. uh, came over, had loads of good things to say about our rig and nothing but curse words about the other two acts. Yeah, and it's and considering pretty, this was our first time out with it, had no idea how it was really going to mesh together. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know if it would even work, honestly. Yeah. We were like, well, but Yeah, of it? course, one circuit show here, people off a of Romax, uh, maybe 14 gauge, maybe. Oh, small, yeah, we were, we were a mile. it was probably 200 foot from the source. Easily, so. yeah, we were a mile from the generator, one circuit for band, sound, and lights. But, yeah, the, the people running the, you know, handing out the beers and stuff, like, oh, you know, two pretty good acts, but that do their own sound. They were like, oh, it was so loud. It was terrible all night. And so, you know, our, our thing was like, you know, not be loud, not be shaking the ground, but have it just sound really, really good. And except for one toothless old drunk that kept coming over and trying to give me lessons about... <laughs> that same toothless drunk tried to steal my girlfriend, too. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. And then the friend that got him off of her tried it himself. Oh, gosh. And I just, I found out about this the day after. I was <laughs> like, well, you know, there's two rules in beer tents. Number one, don't piss off the bartender. Number two, don't piss off the sound guy. It's right. like, either we'll heckle you or <laughs> we're going to have you pummeled by security. So he, what are you thinking? That was This was the same guy that, if anybody knows me from Facebook, I had a post. Actually, I think it was the same night. Oh, oh you, yeah, used, yeah. you used to push equipment for a band? You like, And this is that uh, that Willy Wonka meme. Yeah, I pictured hey. that. You know, like him like, giving you that Con condescending, condescending, like, condescending Wonka. Wonka. Yep. Oh, you used to push boxes for a bar band? Wow, you must know a lot about audio engineering. <laughs> Five bucks says he's got a pair of Beats headphones. Ooh. I don't Absolutely. Think he's even that classy. I don't think he owns it. Didn't yeah, seem yeah. like the kind of type that would own an iPod. He, Radio Shack? He was exuding roofer. <laughs> and here it is. We're two days into June. He's already tan three shaders blacker than the ace of spades and well he had been obviously drinking since about thursday night he was pretty well pickled <laughs> maybe he, his skin may have been that color due to liver failure yeah yeah <laughs> the good uh, so anyway enough about powered speakers although we do uh, our buddy brett who does a lot of dj work just bought a pair from seismic audio they haven't arrived yet so we're going to shoot those out too and we do it quick enough we can do the 152s as well. Oh yeah yeah, <laughs> Anthony's got a pair of 152s. So, yeah, we'll have we'll have some of the larger uh models. Uh, and actually uh, my buddy Gordon called me up the other night. We went out and checked out uh a local band outside. They had an all QSC powered rig. Yeah, the KW153 uh, and four of the KW181s I think it is. Yeah, so four self-powered 18 subs and two uh three-way tops. And, and everyone, turn off the vocal boost, please. please. do. If, if you can still see the band, if it's not quite that humid yet that the fog hasn't obscured the band, leave the vocal boost off. Your your eardrums will thank you, and you will not feel like you yeah. have ice picks. In Unless you think JBL stuff sounds good. Then by all means. <laughs> it's, that's yeah, exactly that's what, what it is. It shouldn't say vocal boost. It should say JBL, <laughs> JBL emulator. JBL, yes. it switch. <laughs> yeah. And then you can EQ it out. Because yeah. everybody was like, right? Like, yeah, it's not... The JBL thing is what, like 31.5? Yeah. I think we figured the vocal boost on those was a little bit above 4K. Yeah, but, yeah. Oh, boy, was it was Yeah, painful. <laughs> um, okay, so enough about powered speakers. We'll, we'll get to that some more later. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about is just uh, what are people listening to lately that's, that's uh, catching your interest? Fall beat. That's pretty much a given. I, I, I bumped some, <laughs> Going to see them in two weeks, so I, I won't be on that podcast. I bumped some Volbeat while I was on the way up here myself tonight. <laughs> Anth, what's in your deck? 
Um, I, I actually haven't had my, my car stereo on in a while. I, the, the ground wire fell out of my sub, and I, I haven't plugged it back in. Um, I thought you did that every time you got in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, it's called well, Sabbath. <laughs> Uh, well, that on top of, I had to have my radiator replaced. The day the day that I paid off my car, my radiator blew up. Um, so I take that and get it fixed. And in the process, they ripped out the wires running to my battery for for powering the sub. So anyways, uh, I that think... That was kind of them. Yeah, it was great because I couldn't find it. They were, they curled it up in a ball and stuck it um, behind the, 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 the brake fluid. So the price of copper would be glad they didn't take it. <laughs> it's not copper. That's, that's why I still got it. There you go. <laughs> um, go hanger, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But really, really, what I've been listening to is um, my own my own band's stuff that we've recorded and engineered and and somewhat mixed down. Um, I've been listening to that a lot just to see if I still like it after after listening to it thirty times in thirty different places. Um, that and uh, I've still been stuck on. The, uh, a couple years back, the Roots did a record with John Legend called uh, "Hard" or no, I'm sorry, "Wake Up." It's a bunch of old war song cover tunes, but the Roots did it. So it's uh, I, I don't know. I, I haven't been able to to get past Questlove's drumming. I'm kind of upset that their bass player Owen Biddle left the band, but now the Roots are all all uh, all black guys again. So <laughs> one of them make, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. One other thing I've been listening to. A bit lately, it's just been coming over serious uh, Apocalyptica, doing a lot of um, Metallica cover tunes in sort of a classical fashion. Oh, they've been around a long time. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, but are they still making records or like? What's, apparently, what, I wonder what their catalog looks like because I remember ten years ago, everybody yeah, who knew the strings those, wanted to do a Metallica tune. And yeah, it was like one of those things. Like I kind of knew they were around, but you know, just never really looked into them. And now I'm just like, huh, I'm catching them more and more on the radio. I should really do that. I don't know, what did they? Did they originally just have like what, like a compilation or two and? I honestly can't remember. That'd be, uh, that, I might actually start listening to Metallica again if I could go back and like revisit the first three albums. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just as lots Chamber of kill music. them all. Yeah. 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 Slash, yeah. Slash has a new record too, which isn't all that bad. Was that a new new record? Mm-hmm. Like two mm. weeks ago it came out. Oh. Wow. It's, uh, what, what I like with, with all the stuff that he's done, like with Velvet Revolver, there's the first CD that was, uh, I think, what was it, Contraband? Yeah, Contraband. It was uh, it was the red one with the, the chick on the front. It was it was not hard rock, but it was it was a little more poppy. But then on the second album, it just got real, real grungy and dirty. And the same thing happened with this. His first album wasn't it wasn't a pop record. You could tell Slash played guitar, but this one's just it's just dirtier. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> well, I've been uh, I can't remember what uh, what got me onto it, but um, I started batting some U uh, two on the ride home. Yeah, I'm trying to, oh, I was, I was, I dared my boss to, after a, after the last service ends on Sunday and the room starts to empty out, I'll turn him down five points and, and dared him to start playing a U2 song. So, <laughs> I thought maybe not discotheque, but, uh, Desire. The, the Playboy or, Mansion or. Where the Streets Have No Name. Sounds like all worship service anyways. Yeah, I'm saying. It's probably it's floated right tons of, tons of delay and. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, just going back, I watched uh, just re- not too recently, but a little while back, It Might Get Loud, and, and seeing how the edge kind of works on his stuff, hearing early uh, early four-track recordings and some famous riffs that everybody knows. That was kind of cool. And I was, I've just been digging into not the more recent stuff. I just I liked them when they were – I like all bands when they're young and pissed. I mean, Metallica made three great records, <laughs> and then they stopped making Crash. So, eh. As soon as I was born, they just sucked. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. actually, they made... I, Sorry, everybody. To my thinking, they made their last good metal record before I became a fan in 88. <laughs> <laughs> 87. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was 88. Mm-hmm. Was that the year you were born? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Justice came out. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I, I went and checked out some back catalog YouTube stuff and just checked out the production values. Like, just listen to how raw stuff was. Went on YouTube, watched some live cuts from like the Joshua Tree days. Have you have you heard Wide Awake in America? No. It's a four song EP that you listen to and it sounds unbelievable and then at the end of the first track you hear applause. I didn't know. Huh. The first the first time I listened to it, my friends like, dude, you've got to check this out. It's it's the best recording of bad I've ever heard. And I listened to it like that's awesome. And you hear clapping and you know, like what? it was that was the recording from Live Eight, like the original. Oh uh-huh. like way yeah. Way back when they uh, they were supposed they're slotted to do three songs and they did bad for like seven and a half minutes and one other song they got kicked off the stage, but it sounds unbelievable. It's just 
It's so rich. I don't know what they used to record that whole concert, but it even on CD. Like yeah, <laughs> well, right. well, and mic wise too. I yeah. mean, you listen to stuff. Uh, I was doing a job, a drywall job, a little bit ago, helping a friend out. So I, my typical thing is I'll, I usually don't have whole albums of stuff on my iPod. I pick and choose stuff because I'm I'm kind of picky. But uh, certain albums have got the whole thing, and like Johnny Cash live at Folsom. That's some working music. I mean, by the time I get to John Henry, I'm, I'm <laughs> slinging some mud, baby. And, uh, you know, like, what the, what was that recorded on? Like, I, I think you can read on... Uh, Probably a couple of those RCA rip mics. Mix yeah. Magazine had a write-up about it. I, I skimmed it, but I didn't get into it. Yeah. But, yeah, that was like a, a, a four-mic, one-channel recording, or maybe two. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing. The, the recording that I showed you that I did with Teaspoon, the jam part of it, um, there aren't a whole lot of close instrument mics. I had one... One mic, uh, what was it? I think it was just a, um, it was a Sennheiser 945, and I had it set up for a violin that he never played. And it, it just adds, like, that room sucks to mix in, mm -hmm. but apparently if you get everybody set up in the right place, there's this amazing, amazing natural reverb that happens in the room. And most of most of what you heard was just a nine forty five. <laughs> Amazing. With a little bit of kick and put snare. A, put a piece of tape on the floor right there. Because our buddy Kevin that used to run a studio had this this yeah. wicked setup for drums. Um, maybe not ideal for everything, but there was a unique the Viking, Viking sound. sound. And yeah. he had this weird L shaped room. And, and you know, if you put the drum kit right here in front of the, the control room door and turned it about thirty degrees, and then you put the ribbon mic exactly here. And then you put the recliner right next to it. You got this just awesome, tight, little, small room sound. And his drums were just popping on yeah, all the records he made because of that. There's a uh, when when I first started recording our album, we spent a few days getting drum sounds, and what we ended up getting down to, and we we went back to close biking everything just so we could really work on it. But we started, we did a kick, a snare, and uh, so Beta 52 on the end, um, Audix i5, and then I set. The two KSM 44s, because I've got an L-shaped room for drums too. And I've got three moving blankets behind it just to get the snare slap back out of it. Set them up flat, um, zero decibel. I had to put them in the shock mounts because for some reason it was picking up all the bass left from the floor. Mm. Um, and got this unbelievable, huge when the levee breaks drum sound. Oh. <laughs> we were like, that would be awesome, but I don't know if we can do a whole record like that. <laughs> so, so you need about four of those on the record, and that, that'll make it. So we've got we've got one or two songs like the real dirty. I played slide acoustic through a Fender Twin Reverb on, and that, that sounds the drums in there sound great. Just this nasty old somewhere between Johnny Cash and, and Led Zeppelin haunting. Alistair Crowley hanging out somewhere in the back 40 type of sound. Awesome. The uh, next topic I want to bring up, and uh, this is just goes to toward listening to stuff. Um, I read an article back toward, well, it was back in the spring, but uh, YouTube announced that they were going to stream a bunch of major festivals. Uh, a couple of them already gone by. Uh, Bonnaroo was this last weekend, and I was at work. I had a pair of Mackie 826 or 820, whatever they are, the big Mackie. Yeah self-powered monitors, and it actually got me to tweak them out until I actually like the way they sound. And I kept moving them and putting stuff under them and balancing and them out. Didn't just turn them off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I actually got them. put an A7Xs on hey, top. There are real studios that use them. Uh, they're kind of like the, the NS10 of modern times, like this that cheap reference speaker. That, yeah. But, uh, no, I got them to where they didn't. I mean, I still, I don't know if I want to mix a record on them, but they were pretty good to listen to the Chili Peppers set streaming on yeah. YouTube. And, man, what a job they did. Um and this is just something that, like one, just a really cool way to, to see bands. I mean, it always kills me that I, I can never make it to stuff. Like I hardly ever, unless I'm working, I don't get to yeah. see shows and I don't mix for people that are just had to turn down a gig today for a show that I'm going to go see instead. <laughs> right. Right. And that's, and I would never do that. That's why like, I, would, I already had the tickets before they called. So I know. Well, it, I, uh, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> and it's a ways away. So you I'll, know. I'll, the only thing I turned down is my collar. If somebody calls me up for something, I, I would skip my own children's baptisms to mix a gig. <laughs> but, um, well, so yeah, like, maybe, maybe one of the guys on the tour will get sick and I'll get to mix Volby, you know, I can always hope. Yeah. Not wishing you anybody see, ill you, will there, but you know, you just need a shirt same. that says we'll mix for beer in Danish and you're, yes, you got yes. the slot. Um, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I was sitting at my desk late, and I was waiting for actually the last podcast to upload to YouTube, and this link slides across the top, and it says, now now streaming live from Bonnaroo with Red Hot Chili Peppers. And I'm, I'm a big fan of Dave Ratt, big fan of the Chili Peppers. Those two go together oh so nice. So I click on it, and... Time to clean the up, keyboard right after. Yeah. Up it pops. 
the video was flawless, glitch free, and we have a terrible network. I mean, I was looking at high res, good. I mean, they did some serious work at the head end for their pipes, and the the stats for it at the top were amazing. I mean, at that point in the festival, they had like eight million views. Oh, wow. For a weekend event, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the mix was tight. You know, they must have had a separate truck somewhere. They were doing a super job. So I, I watched them. The next night I watched Fish. And then uh, on Sunday night, uh, the last night, I wound up watching. Um... Oh, no, it was, it was Sunday. It was Saturday night. Sunday night, I wound up watching Fish for a while. And then Alice Cooper came on at a much smaller stage. Mm-hmm. But I had also read about his acts. So I'm like. Man, you know, you never, unless you get to see him, you haven't seen his act yeah. unless you have, you know, you, you watch some heavy metal thing on VH1 and they show that, that same thing of him, you know, throwing a chicken around on stage and then he gets his head cut off. Um, so I'm watching, and it was, the theater was amazing. The band was amazing. Uh, three electric players, tight rhythm section. The the staging was awesome. Uh, his voice is crap. He, he can just barely croak it out. But <laughs> for the material, it's kind of fitting. I mean, he's doing... Yeah. A horror show, and it sounds like a demon. <laughs> just <laughs> welcome to my night. I mean, that's that's giving him a few points if it sounded that good. Um, so yeah, I, and, but he's like seeing him interviewed and just knowing how much fun he has doing that. I just I kick back in my shop, turn up the subs a little bit, and just kind of let that wash over me. And oh wait, no, wait a minute! You turned up your subs? You always yell at me to turn mine down. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Anytime I'm really getting into the song with a big kick drum, and you're like. Come on, the windows are shaking out of... I did it that one time because I was afraid we were going to get kicked out if we broke the windows. <laughs> <laughs> Live a little. <laughs> um, well, anyway, the, just watching the, the show and the theatricality of it, but the neat thing was you had three lead players, and you know, just watching them, like, okay, it got a little boring after the fourth song where they all had to take a solo, but the one that was clearly the lead lead player was this girl... All done up like Zion. You know, she had a cowboy hat, like the gunslinger hat down uh, over her eyes. Paul Reed Smith? Uh, At one point, yeah. But she had a a white Charvel or something. I think it's the girl that was supposed to play with Michael Jackson on the tour. Yes. Orianthe? Yes. Yep. Man, does she have some chops. And she's good looking, too. So check out Orianthe. She's, uh, she's, um, the This Is It Michael Jackson DVD. She's all up on there. She was... All set to tour with him. She's toured with a bunch of heavy hitters and apparently has, like, some... Michael Jackson found her on YouTube. Awesome. But she's got some solo stuff. She's like, oh, yeah. she's charted in numerous countries. She's apparently world famous. We just don't yeah. know about her here in the States. Cause yeah. Well, she pops, she'll pop up on VH1 every once in a while, yeah. like the behind the music thing, and they'll give her a little bit of FaceTime, but not a whole lot. Yeah. So anyway, that was, that was my cool little discovery. But I was just, uh, on another note, I mean, as, as cool as it was to see the Chili Peppers and Fish with... Smooth camera work. I mean, the cameras they have these days can really capture a lot of what goes on at a concert. Um, cameras that go- cost as much as the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a but nice, they had, a nice house. They didn't do the thing where they used to do for concert footage, where you just like dump white light, you know, face light on, so you can see them. I mean, watching the Peppers, you could barely tell where they were sometimes, but they really did a nice job capturing the backline lighting behind them. They had a, a killer rig. So did Fish. Uh-huh. Um, so it was just, I felt like I was there. I mean, even watching it, uh, I was watching Fish at home with just a $20 pair of Sony cans on. And the sound was enveloping and inviting and, and crisp, and the video was stunning. So just cool that somebody had the guts to do that. Like, I'd love to know which way the money changed hands. If YouTube gave Bonnaroo a bucket of cash to do this or the money went the other way, but... Um, just cool in that way that a rising tide raises all vessels, you know, getting interest generated. I can only imagine that's going to sell more tickets to Bonnaroo next year when the old mentality would have been, no, we need to sell more tickets. We can't give this away for free. But they did. They announced it early. People knew about it. Eight or nine million people clicked on it and checked it out. And, uh, you know, I can only think that that helps sell some CDs. And this is really part of that argument where it works to have stuff free on the Internet. I mean, I, I personally know some people who aren't in bands making beautiful art anymore because they could not sell a CD because once they sold one, it was out there for nothing. They literally could not sell a CD and went out of business. So, um, but I think on this scale, like, you know, putting this stuff out there, I mean, I I didn't actually look around too much. I imagine you probably could click on something somewhere and, and go straight to iTunes and, and buy stuff. And I think the official channel had a bunch of this, a bunch of the footage saved and, you know, you can check it out. So, uh, by all means, uh, look up the official Bonnaroo. There's two N's, by the way, in Bonnaroo. Uh, makes it easier to find. 
but check that out on YouTube and uh, and see what's on there. Um, some some killer killer footage. Uh, even if it's not bands that you're into, man, go check out ten minutes of a set and just see how big production is is done and done well. Uh, I, I, if you click on YouTube to watch stuff a lot, it's just such a, a headache. Like just sorting through all the drek, all the lousy. <laughs> cell phone video and whatnot. So anyway, I was I was just really pumped about that. And then uh, the other thing, while we're shifting gears here a little bit, is uh, I just wanted to give a shout out. Uh, the, part of the reason I'm doing this is because, um, well, partly I, I started the blog because I, I have an education requirement in my contract. I need to teach volunteers where I work, how to use the equipment, how to do things, and it's really hard. Everybody's really busy, so I was like, all right, well, I'll write stuff. And uh, fortunately, it's caught on. So thanks to all our readers around the world again to. Uh, Everybody the world over in Europe, Germany. Uh, we've got readers in the UK and Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Sweden. Did I say Denmark already? Um, all those places. Russia. Uh, although I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just a botnet from Russia. <laughs> if you are the one from Russia, please respond. I would seriously love it if somebody is. If I don't know if anybody from Russia listens, but if anybody's listening from Russia, please leave me a comment uh, in in Russian on the blog. I, that would totally make me flip my flapjacks. <laughs> the Russians probably had no idea what I just said. Russia yeah. flapjacks for you. <laughs> Soviet Russia flapjacks for you. That's awesome. Uh, but anyway, uh, the reason I started this blog is because a friend of mine turned me on to this thing called the Audio Nowcast. And what it is is this, this bunch of heavy hitters out in L.A. They've been at it for, I think, seven years now. They only just recently crossed the 100 podcast mark because I think they only go once or maybe twice a month. And sometimes they take six months off. Uh, so we're going um, <laughs> to catch them. <laughs> in, in, in slightly under two years, if we manage to stay on every week, we'll catch up to them. But um, no, I mean, and, and they're way bigger dogs than us, but I just learned so much talking to them. And I, I remember thinking, you know, I mean, these are guys that mixed Metallica records and every famous movie that you've heard of and toured with Stevie Wonder and toured with, you know, it, it just the, the cream of the crop. And But they sound just like we do. If you listen to them, they, they make obscure jokes about odd pieces of equipment and musical jokes like that nobody else gets. Or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that inspired me. I was like, wow, these guys sound exactly like my buds. We should, we should get together and do this maybe at a smaller scale for our segments of the industry, the weekend warriors and the small venue mixers and stuff. So um, check those guys out. Uh, it might be over your head, but that's good. Listening to stuff that's over your head drives you to learn other stuff. And it's not, they rarely talk about live sound. It's a lot about studio and post work. And uh, they actually talk about songwriting and producing a lot. And all that information is terrific knowledge to have. So look them up. It's, uh, uh, I think it's actually Nowcast Networks, but uh, Google Audio Nowcast, those guys will pop up. And uh, they they have some great guests on, uh, way heavier hitters than we could ever snag here. But uh, and that'll lead you to a million other things. I just got hooked on Pensado's place, Dave Pensado, a killer killer engineer producer, worked on all kinds of famous stuff. He has all kinds of famous buddies on, and he does does like an actual video show on on YouTube. But anyway, that's that's the reason why we're doing what we do is to kind of share the knowledge a little bit, but also to to provoke thought and discussion. Amongst ourselves, and uh, for the newbies out there listening, we are on purpose talking over your heads so that you will go out and get on Google and Wikipedia and uh, all the other sites and learn something so that you don't wind up in a venue killing the mix like we hear so many times. Uh, the ways that we stay employed. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, that actually winds up being kind of a good segue. Uh, I'm going to go back and talk about this little tent gig that we did, the importance of dynamics that came up there and it also came up with this little bit of, of a theater gig that I'm doing. Uh, they actually have dynamics in their rider. When somebody else is providing tech, they they expect that there be at least some form of compression in there, and it it really makes the difference between you know well, like we stood in front of this polka band, these old bar buzzards playing polka hits, and they had the vocals turned up loud enough so that you would be able to hear them when they were speaking softly, and then all of the rest of the time it was painful. Uh, big snare hits were getting into the vocal mics. Uh, you know, shouts and whoops were coming through at, at clip level. Yeah. Accordion solos made me run back to my truck and hide. Right. <laughs> With the door shut. You, you did not drink enough potato vodka <laughs> is the problem. That's, right, because that's, I, that's the requirement. You have to drink a, at least a fifth before you walk in the door to that thing. Well, the crowd was into them, and they were, yeah, they were probably sozzled. I, however, had to stay straight because a, a <laughs> teaspoon of cough syrup lays me out, and I can't mix sense. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I got the double recessa gene for alcohol consumption. I just <laughs> usually just talking about a cocktail is enough to mellow me out, and I probably shouldn't drive for a little bit after that. <laughs> actually, true story. Our first first uh, actual production group meeting actually had at a bar and. Love John like a brother. I told him to give me his keys halfway through his first beer. <laughs> that was back when I did try and drink a little bit. Yeah, I had half a Guinness and was slurring my speech. <laughs> but anyway, that was the bad old days. Um, so anyway, I just uh, we haven't talked about gear in a little bit, and I actually haven't been talking about gear much on the blog either. It's been getting a little sort of artsy fartsy theory philosophy kind of stuff. Um, which actually, there's going to be one uh, one more dose of that. Um, I got my buddy Lucy. Uh, her last name's different now that she's grown up, but uh, my friend Lucy from uh, Purchase uh, would not do an interview, but we did uh, and some, exchange some emails, and I got some some cool answers to questions. And uh, her her philosophy and her methodology and her music are all very interesting. So that will actually probably already be posted by the time this this podcast airs. So check Lucy R out. She actually she plays under the name Lucy R uh, some of the time. But check Lucy's stuff out. She's got a bunch of cool stuff up on SoundCloud. Um, I don't want to talk too long about it, but yeah, if you've ever, you, you, you haven't lived until you've heard industrial music that has distorted ukulele in it. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you do listen to it give, give it, give it a fair chance. It's not a ton of music. Put it on sometime when you got a minute to, if you're not way into it, just have it on in the background while you're doing something else because there's, there's probably at least one or two songs out of there that will jump out and grab you. I listened to the whole thing, and I was like, oh, yeah, it's cool. That's neat. I like this. I like that. The last track really grabbed me, and I, and, uh, I actually loaded it on my iPod, so that was cool. Have you, have you uh, heard of or seen the Yuki bass? No. What? <laughs> they make a ukulele bass? There's, I can't remember. I think it's, it's Yuka bass is the name of the company. They're ukuleles, four strings. Um, but the strings, I guess they, they've changed a few times. They, they look like rubber bands. They're just, that's the <laughs> only way they right after we're done. Right. This. Yeah. You yeah, can make those. Um, one of my, one of my good friends, Jim, um, he does a lot of outreach stuff and he works a lot at Walter Reed Memorial hospital and gives disabled soldiers, guitars and music lessons and all that kind of stuff. Um, so they're sponsored by ultimate support and sure. And a bunch of other people just cause they, they give all their stuff away in, in army bases. Um, he showed up. He's like, "Yeah, we didn't have a lot of room in the in the trailer, so I just brought this." And I look, he's like, "Jim, when'd you learn how to play violin?" He's like, "No, dude, check this out. Um, it's not an every occasion bass, I would say, uh, but it's definitely it, it's, it's an attention grabber. Like it's it's full down to a low E. Wow. Um, I mean, <laughs> if it gets warm outside, the strings just kind of start to <laughs> start to <laughs> melt, and it goes down to B. <laughs> <laughs> it's like playing a five string, but it's only fourteen inches long." No, but wow. yeah, it's uh, they, I guess they've got a whole line of them. Like I saw, I saw a video with Abe Laboreal, who is one one of the nastiest bass players I've ever seen. Is that uh, Peter Gabriel's guy? Or? Um, no, nothing. no. Um, but Abe Laboreal, look him up on YouTube. The guy's he's sponsored by just crazy companies, and he's an unbelievable bass player. Like Victor Wooten, good, but just a little bit more fusion, I guess. Um, but he does he does a demo with one, and it's just like you. Most people can't do that on a normal bass, much less a, a 14 inch little ukulele. Wow. Speaking of Victor Wooten, my, my best friend back home, we both had Mondays off. I got up one Monday morning a little bit ago, and uh, first thing he got up to like was watching Victor Wooten on YouTube, posted it to Facebook, and then I went out and checked YouTube with my cup of coffee and locked myself in my shop for a solid hour and just watched him get down. That was a good morning. But anyway, back to <laughs> dynamics. Uh, the dynamics can totally save a show, or if you overuse them, totally flatten it out and make it really boring. Um, so anyway, without getting too much into it, unless it comes up again, I want to talk about the the dynamics that we have and the dynamics that we wish we had, <laughs> and maybe even the dynamics that we wish no one knew we had. <laughs> so uh, I can start. Um, I started out I uh, when I was in college and first putting my rigs together, the Alesis 3630s, the, the two-channel blackface uh, comp gates. Those were the thing to get. They were, I don't know, 149 bucks or whatever at, at Guitar Center or Sam Ash. And uh, they're still my favorite of the cheapy compressors. I mean, Behringer makes some in that price range, you know, 50 bucks a channel or whatever. Um, they don't have detented knobs, which makes me at least feel like I can make some subtle adjustments <laughs> to them. <laughs> uh, and that's just a feel thing. Um, I also like the, the fact that they're not silver and shiny. And I <laughs> like the metering on them. They have nice big lights on them and... I just I can look at them from the other side of the venue and just know what's going on with them. 
And uh, yeah, they don't—they're not the greatest compressor in the world. But we they need to change those out to blue LEDs so as you can see them for ten miles. <laughs> Super brights. Uh, well, if I get to that point, I'll just network it and mix from home. <laughs> <laughs> um, but moving up, uh, what I got a little more money. I actually didn't put any in my rig, but I, I spec some for install, and they have some here at the church. Uh, I'm a big fan of the DBX. Oh, I'm not going to be able to quote the number right. 1046, I think, is what you have. Four channel? No, the two channel one with, oh. the, with the gate. 266 with the XL. Uh, is it the 260? Or wait, no, he's got 10, one off the, 1066. The 266, so. 1066. 1066. 1066 yeah. is the one. The 266 is okay, but I really like the 1066. Yeah, I, like I have the, the 266 as my rack. I like the I feel of it and the look of it and the sound of it. I've got, I think I've got all of them. That's why I'm confused. Yeah, I have all of them <laughs> yeah. in my room, too. The 266, I'm not wild about. I mean, they sound good. They're just, I don't yeah. feel like they're as user friendly. I think we use them for, well, I don't use them, but our video guy uses them for web stream compression, so he just sets them to crush. And, uh,. <laughs> Yeah, it all sounds like this. Um, yeah. yeah, but hey, it's web web video. It's video, it's yeah. Mo- people. The thing is, people listening at home, like I, uh, well, the the podcast isn't a good example because I crunch it down to like forty kbps <laughs> and like the sample kick the sample rate down to like twenty two. <laughs> Not all the way to eight, but Ooh. when you think about it, I mean, most people that listen to stuff either their gear's not good enough or their ears aren't good enough, like. Forget twenty four ninety six. I mean, they yeah. couldn't tell if you did it at eight k. <laughs> yeah. Sample. Rate. Just remember, a recent survey says that MP three sound best. It's like because yeah, they're scared. free. That's yeah, what, <laughs> pretty much. Well, the, you can get a high bit rate MP three to sound pretty yeah. respectable. Yeah, I mean, respectable. It's not like they're full yeah. of artifacts, but even at that, there are like even. What, what I've done with ripping all of mine I is think I think that was measured at ni- the 96 rate, though, not even the 128. Yeah, that well, well yeah. At, I, so. 128 is like the, the lowest threshold that I want to listen to. Right. But they may also be thinking, like, Apple encodes all their stuff at a- as AACs and at right. a higher bit rate than that. Like, yeah, they're no, at least 256. Yeah, this official MP3, so. Oh. But I've tried to go at least 320 on all the stuff I can do, or if I actually have the CD, just go 100% lossless and go 1411. And like there, there is a difference. Not for everything, but there's some some neat, especially like Daft Punk stuff. Like in the quiet sections is where yeah, you're yeah, like where it really opens up, or uh, the nine inch, nine inch nails stuff, especially. Um, even some of the older stuff, it just it sounds richer. And if you listen to thrash metal like me, it can be eight bit still. Yeah, as long, it's as, fine. as long as it gets the subs moving. Yeah. <laughs> um. What was I going to say? The uh, and the compressor I hate. <laughs> the one like I have, I have one of those Behringer four channel quad comp, does for quad comp gate or, limiter it, extender. Not, but I think it, it, it doesn't have a limiter for the amps. You know, it doesn't. It is. Yeah, okay. I, I bought it to put in my monitor rack yeah. so, to keep me from blowing stuff up. It's not. It doesn't even have comp in the name though. It's something else because I've got one of those too. Dynamic processor. I think it'll well, time and dwell your truck. <laughs> multi 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 com. Yeah, multi com. Yeah. It doesn't have the P. What? Where they they ran out of the, like the extra three. Yeah, cents and then they the had the AutoCom the and the Comp Oser. We just call them posers. That's posers. <laughs> posers. Oh, sorry, you're Canadian, are you? Yeah, I am a quarter Canadian. <laughs> watch, watch it, Mister. It's okay. I'm gonna sorry. watch Canadian. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? <Hey>. Sorry. <laughs> you just lost Canada. <sighs> I think it's just my my relations. I'm related. I'm related again to get. I have cousins in Canadian in Canadian. Listen, to me. <laughs> I have Canuck cousins and Canuck um, Canuck distant relations. And uh, my brother just married a Canadian girl. So, um, hi. <laughs> That's my my in law. If it's my in law in laws up there listening, yeah, yeah. hi, hi y'all. As, as he breaks into Blaine Canada here in a second. <laughs> oh, I, it was so hard not to sing that the whole time I was at their wedding because I was with a bunch of a holes that were totally prodding me to. <laughs> Compressors. I'm not going to tell yes, you what we did. Shop. Yeah, and, and okay, the one that I hate is my my quad comp, even though that's what I'm down to in my my little go box. Uh, but here at work, we have the uh, Prozonus. Uh, what is it? The AC AC88. Yeah, never have liked it. I thought those were the coolest thing when they came out, and then I got to mix on one, and I was like, well, yeah. at least it's eight channels of something. Yeah, it's and just the, so. And the gates open like doors. The gates are useless. <laughs> I turned I turned them off, and I should pull the knobs off. Like they just they need to dab a super glue behind them and get it to off before it sets. <laughs> yeah, uh, completely useless. The gates, and you hear them too. Yeah, well, you, you can actually hear them. Oh, get, yeah. like a door, man. Big, yeah. heavy wooden door. <laughs> like my my drummer gates, you can you can fiddle with them to where the attack is fast enough that you actually hear it opening, and then you got to back off a little bit. But that's just 
I think they did that just so they so could prove know. to you that it actually is that responsive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the the Prisona gates are worthless, and the yeah. cops are just thankfully, so finicky. Like, thankfully, you know, they did a lot better in the Studio Live series. <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, that was what got me into to really liking my DBX 1099s because I, I mixed on the Studio Live and got used to having expansion on every channel, so I can compress the top and expand the bottom, and mm -hmm. suddenly I've got a really nice mix going. So I actually wish I had a rack full of those. But yeah, the ACP88, you just a lot of compressors you can just kind of wave your hand at and get it close and, yeah. and go. And maybe you go back to it and revisit it and tighten it up a little bit. But those ACPs, I mean, you got to, one, really know your stuff, like have, have a good understanding of how dynamics behave. And then you got to know exactly what's going into it and exactly what you want out of it and exactly where to put the knobs to get it or you're just getting throttled. Yeah. Like it's either not going to do anything or you're going to have all the lights on. It's <laughs> been my experience. <laughs> um, Stop. So yeah, if you if you like that whole crush, like if distressors are your other favorite compressor with all the buttons in and all the knobs cranked, then yeah, go for it. Uh, but yeah, those and those are my to to wrap up my segment of it. If I could have anything, I mean, I short of like a dozen Poltex, you know, and have a, a three quarters of a million dollars worth of yeah. of lovely, lovely, softy analog compression. Um, I I would really love a pair or two of. Distressors, because those yeah, are, they yes. just they act they so nice. nice. Oh, you know what though? My other favorite one—I forgot about this because I, I you don't see them that out often. Is the uh, the Pro VLA? Oh, <clears> the art. The yeah, the art. ARTs. Yeah, ART nice. stuff gets kind of. You get, have you got one? Duh! Come on, you've met Tubi. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right. Well, that's <laughs> okay. That's why I never see them because they're in the four thousand pound tube rack. That, that's <laughs> Doesn't weigh that much. He and I carried it up the stairs. That, that's been in my office all winter. Stay Dang. warm. But yeah, that's yeah. Uh, Roman had one at the park stage at Kingdabound this summer, and he's yeah. like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah I got that on milestones too. I got that on lead vocals. Just dial it in when you're ready." So I I put my hand on the threshold knob and I started cranking it down and cranking it down, and I'm waiting for it to kick in and. I was listening because, like, man, the, I wonder if he just started singing better or if it's working better. And I looked over and it was comping like 12 dB, yeah. <laughs> and I, ne I didn't, I never heard it come in. Like, it just, yeah. I rolled it in and it just came in so smooth and was working so smooth. Not bad for 300 bucks. Yeah, yeah. And now you know why I went from 266 dBx to a whole bunch of, uh, I think it's TCS compressors with yep. a Pro VLA on the mains. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's they're, it's they're, a, Pro VLA that's, is a great, great investment for yeah, studio. I wish, I, I wish I could justify a rack of those instead of a TCS, but I kind of needed to be able to do a show with one rack and not ten. So, yeah. and then my my last one, and I'll turn it over. Is I bought a, a Joe Meek. Like I would occasionally, I used to get asked to do coffee shop stuff, so I had like a you know a POS Mackie eight channel mixer amp and a couple of pole speakers and a couple of wedges. But I really, you know, for like a vocal or a good acoustic guitar, I wanted like a couple of good channels. So oh. I got this, the Joe, Joe Meek. Uh, Twin Q. Twin Q, yeah. thank you, Anthony. It lives at his place now, which yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen in a year. <laughs> Along with my Neumann, but I did get that back. Got that um, back. <laughs> yeah, no, that one's been, it's a cool box. You can have a, a transformer input or a, a balanced in uh, or a, a differential. Switch right here. Yeah, and uh, it's got Phantom in it. Uh, killer, huge amount of headroom in the preamp. Yeah, and it's got it's a hard to hard to get that thing to, to peg. Yeah, and um and then a compressor optical simulated optical or is it actual? It's optical? a photo optical compressor. It's a real photo yeah. optical. See, I said I haven't used no. it in two years, and it's been <laughs> Anthony's for a year. It's noisy, yeah, it's it's noisy as hell, but uh, but yeah, it's that's my favorite. Like I see those I like CCS it. have got uh, optical and VCA and tube, so you can switch between all three. Yeah. Don't those are those ones that had the impedance matching on it too? No, uh, no, not those. No. The, the uh, uh, MPAs. The MPAs. Right. They have that, and the voice channel that I've got has that. Mm. And I've also got the Eureka, which has that to a lesser extent. Yeah. But I like that that yeah, Joe Meek one. Wasn't as nice as the Eureka, but it was one space to plug the rack. So you know. Yep. I actually don't like it. Well, I have used it as an active DI for a pair of guitars, but you can't. It's it was not made to love <laughs> guitars the right way. But what it's good for is when you want that like that Robert Plant like just smashed vocal it's great for that or on guitars you can just crush them i used it a lot when we were recording i actually used it for because we only did like we did not super minimalist mic techniques but you know we, we close mic all the toms so we didn't really use it but i used it because we only used one kick mic and one snare mic mm. and it just sounded like all the beta 52 and i5 they're just like the kicks just got so it, it doesn't get muddy. It's not floppy. Well, that's the you optical get, thing. It, right. it takes a little bit, so you get the attack still yep. coming through, mm -hmm. and then it just fattens up whatever's left. But after if, a few if you months. accidentally hit it, and it goes to absolute crush, real quick. Hmm. 
All right, so I'll stop monopolizing. Uh, let's go to Gordon next. What's what's in your rack? What would you like to have in your rack? When what's your uh, what's your favorite? Also, and the least favorite. Don't forget those. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I started off with the DDX two sixty six XL stuff. Then, uh, granted, there was one Behringer thing in there. It was kind of a matter of space and cash at the time, so I did end up with one of those four channel deals. But just still sitting around in what I call the C rack, just for the stuff that's like. Crap! I'm not bringing out the 400 pound rack, or hey, it's going to be in a school for a week. Don't really care what happens to it. Have fun. Uh, and then I've also got, uh, like I said, a whole rack, 10 channels worth of TCS compression with a v- Pro VLA in there. Also in our voice channel, but that's more in preamps. But there's still compression in there. Uh, really love all the ART stuff. Tubes do tend to get a little bit toasty, but hey, it is fan cool now. By the way, Ev. So just remember to unplug those when you're doing recording, yeah, otherwise it's going to be a little noisy. But, uh, yeah, like uh, drummer stuff would be a wonderful thing. Uh, <laughs> the Poltex, like John was talking about. That's just a yeah. pipe dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not going to happen. And as far as live goes, yeah, I wouldn't want to bring that kind of money out on the road. It's just like, yeah, that gets dropped off a truck once. I'm thinking you're going to cry, <laughs> and you're not going to stop for a long, long time. <laughs> Oh, that, that one wouldn't go anywhere. Those would be... Yeah, no, I mean, even my ART tubes are in a shock rack still, and they don't see the light of day very often. Other than Anthony's studio, and let me guess now that John knows about them, they're going to be living over here. <laughs> I might come pull just the VLAs. <laughs> I, you know what, for what There's they cost... There's only one, but I do have two MPA Golds, too, sitting around yeah. for premium. You do? Yeah. You didn't know that? No. Duh. You want to sell one? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> You can rent it. For the right price, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll do that. Yeah, I need to. <laughs> okay. I really they need are to... very nice. By I, the way, I, I, I do the theater organ recording. That's really about the only type of live recording I do, for the most part, are just like board tapes. And, yeah, those things fatten up an organ even. It's like, howdy. And, uh, yeah, puns intended, whichever way you want to take them. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, Joey did the whole Randy Kindle album. He, he came in and uh, they used that, that gorgeous piano that we've got. Um, with the KSM 44s set uh, in an MS, an uh, Omni on the bottom and figure eight on top, um, in your Neumann underneath, and uh, ran through the MPA, and it just it sounded sounded great. He actually he was making fun of me. I had a uh, on loan a, a Avalon 737 SP sitting upstairs, which I wish I had yeah, lots also of. Yeah, very nice. Um, but uh, which, uh, by the way, I think the new MPA golds actually do MS encoding and decoding right in the box. So. Oh, that's good enough. If you swap out the tubes, they sound great, um, even better than they, they already do. But he uh, he was making fun of me. He's like, you know, for all the money that they charge you for the friggin' Avalon, he's like, they can at least make it feel like the knobs aren't just going to fall off. <laughs> but, and, I, like, I never had a problem with it before. I was like, oh, these move real nice. And then you, I went back, and I was like, oh, well, it just kind of feels feels a little plasticky. <laughs> the, the MPA has just got this nice glide yeah, to it. Yep. Like it doesn't, you can't just flick it and it spins like a Mackie fader. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it's got this nice gradual, ah, right in. Because where the Avalon, if you just, you're going, right. you, yeah, it just, it, poof, right, right to the other side. And I, I mean, for the money, I, I really like the Avalon stuff. Um, I'd like to get one or two of those in, maybe some focus right stuff. Focus right stuff isn't bad. You know what they're great yeah, for? Yeah. Is they're little interfaces. Yes, there's, like a, there's under a liquid sapphire. Yeah, like under three hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. Oh, how many channels? Channel. What? On <laughs> Craigslist, liquid sapphire fifty six channel, eight hundred dollars. Craigslist <laughs> today it was posted. All right, we're gonna shut the podcast down right now. <laughs> I need my laptop back. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you, I mean, for little stuff like you can get a, a two channel focus right. USB thing, for, yeah, a couple hundred with genuine focus right pre's in it, man. Yeah. It's it's worth the money if nothing else. If you just run them for pre's, mm-hmm. I am still really curious as to how that Earthworks preamp that's like two to a hundred or three hundred k actually sounds, especially with some of their mics. If you I'd had, you love need, to be around one of those someday. I think you need some pretty good stuff to actually catch it. Although Utilize. the thing that they're saying yeah. about all this hundred k stuff is uh, that's hundred kilohertz sampling rate. No, no this is frequency bandwidth. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, yeah. So that, yeah, so 100, yeah, no, 100. You're really analog. Yeah, way, way up there. Um, the thinking behind that is not that humans can hear up that high and not so that your your dog can hear stuff the that's not there. But like the, interplay. Yeah, it's the har- harmonic interplay was what Anthony just said. So, like, if you have a piano that's throwing off overtones up in, the say, like the 50,000 hertz range, you're not actually hearing those, but if there's one overtone at 50,000 hertz 
and another overtone at 51,000 hertz, the beat note in between them is going to be at 1,000 hertz. So that adds a little bit of magic, you know, that sort of floats in there and glistens right down in the mid section of the, the spectrum. Which is why, uh, actually, I, in the extreme, if you go the exact opposite way, um, piano on AM radio sounds out of tune because the bandwidth is limited and you don't hear the upper register, you don't hear the strings resonating up above. So the, just the plain fundamentals of the piano sound out of tune with all the, the rest of that resonance going on. That's why Honky Tonk was so big. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it worked out on AM radio. Yeah. All right, what else, Gordon? What do you, what's, what's the dream rig? Dream comp? Anything drummer has ever made and Clark Technic? Eh, not so much on the Clarks. No? Yeah, I don't know. I just never got to be really a fan of their stuff, but not saying it's bad, just drummer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, drummer. Anth, start talking. Um I've got the the full the full menu of, of DBX stuff. Um I got a couple one sixty A's. Um, I don't know what those are though. Uh, I need to find those. No, Wait, pocket. which which ones are those? The ones, those are the, ones the ones that you have up for the kick. Oh yeah, dude. I yeah, those sound, those. those sound great. I don't know what happened to them. Someone's like, ah, they can't be that good. They only have three knobs. Like, ah, son of a... yeah, those yeah, are the, the best ones, ones we had. <laughs> uh, Even those yeah. with one knob. Yeah, yeah. If, good. if I couldn't get the drummers, I like the one sixty Yeah. Which one's... was that? The one sixty X that just had the, the the slider on it, just more. I don't know. Uh, oh, actually, I believe so. And my dad had, or no, my dad has one with two knobs because it did expansion or compression. <laughs> one labeled less and the other one labeled more. <laughs> Darn close. Yeah. We had a pair of, I think it was the 160 actually. We had a pair of those at school. They were much loved. Uh, those, um, we had the uh, uh, same, um, the 3630s. We had a bunch of those. Not sure what happened to those either. Um, we had four of them. Uh, but now we've got the 166 XL um, for lead vocals. Or no, I'm sorry. The, the 1066 is the two channel with the expanders and the gates on it, right? We got a couple of those. Um, a couple of the 1046. Uh, one of the 166, and then the video guys got the 266. Um, then there's that you know that shiny Behringer guy sitting right at the bottom of the rack. Um, what well, you got to have it at the bottom of the rack, you know, it's still there to support everything else. That's what's going to catch the tape player. Right, um, right. <laughs> God, God forbid anything happens to the <laughs> tape player. <laughs> I, wreck, I wrecked a guy's day two weeks ago. He came in to do a service with with a VHS and a stack of cassette tapes. And I, I didn't know what to tell him. I was like, I I threw all that stuff out. We don't have anything around here that plays you know, tape. It, admittedly, like I was getting a new credit card the other day because mine's well worn through from gas and all that kind of good stuff, and uh, they actually had like a cassette tape logo. I was like, that would be kind of cool, but no. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I actually keep in our front of house rack here uh, a dual deck, you know, a CD player cassette deck, and I use the cassette. Well, if I get a CD, I just throw it in the Macintosh and off we go. But I've used the cassette deck more times than I would care to mention. Like, people show up at my office, like, every week sometimes, like, oh, we have these great tapes from the children's ministry and you can't get them anymore. Could you put these on CD for us? I'm like, yeah, let me take them upstairs. Well, but, hang uh, on, John. Uh, there, there's a potentially really large restoration project that I may unfortunately end up in charge of that's all reel-to-reel -reel going to CD and such. That's why I was asking about archiving a couple weeks ago. So We get to keep the reel-to-reel -reel after we'll do it. Yeah, does the project come with a machine? Or? Um, well, my dad owns two, and I'm not sure. There may be another couple in the club. Is it his stuff? Or? Uh, sort of. It's a theater organ place that's trying to oh. basically get stuff off of the reels that's been on there since, uh, let's see, when were they founded? Late 60s, I think. As long as it's not melted. Yeah. yeah sure. might, have, might have to do some bacon. Make sure you, every time you open a reel, check for sticky shed. Yeah, yeah. There's I've, kids uh, listening I at home, there's read tape. Up a bunch about that. Yeah, not all tape, but tape from a certain area, era. And 3M was yeah. really well known for 3M it. 3M was known for That's it. That's why they like, make tape now. Yeah, I think it was, was the late 60s or early 70s. But uh, anyway, the tape, when it sat in the box for too long, you would start to unwrap it, and then all the oxide would peel off. The solution is just to bake it. Uh, although, don't just slap it in. Don't slap your grandpa's old reels in your mom's oven and turn it on. You got to look look up how to yeah. do it. It can be done yeah. safely at home, but look it up. Yes. Before you ruin some <laughs> some marvelous old archive. And uh, if, fortunately, the stuff is still very much playable after you bake it. I mean, you, yep. you want yeah, actually, we've uh, done two or three restorations over the past now 
10, 15 years or whatever, and I actually have gotten lucky and have not had that problem. Threw it right to Dad and a computer at the same time and ran away with it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that can be fun stuff. Um, what's not fun is aligning a real machine. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, I haven't done it. And it's, and it's on real real. I haven't done it. Oh, yeah, that was actually how I got my start. Yeah, yeah. Cutting, cutting tape, literally, with an editing yeah, block and a razor blade. Now, John, and that's danger close to dating me, so... Well, at the same time, though, like I would be cutting sound effects for theater on Otari two and four track reels, tracking bands on ADATs, and yeah, mixing I mean, on Pro Tools. I, <laughs> there's no Otari, time. although I do know somebody that has a few of those. So. Yeah, Alan's got a couple. All right. Well, let me see. I got to check to see what we're doing on time here. Yeah, we got a few minutes, but yeah, it's it's getting pretty close to time to wrap it up. So, uh, anything else with the uh, first compressor models or? Um, what do we use? I've got a Joby Twin Q. Sit, sitting upstairs, <laughs> that just works great for overheads and kick and snare. Um, I don't know, if I, if I could, I we went to go and see Foo Fighters. They had a they had one of those just super old H three Ks in front of the house, and they just had a rack of seven thirty sevens next to them. Oh yeah, I, mean, I think there were, there were four or four or six of them. Damn, and they, like that was it. That's all that was in the rack. There was Furman and four seven thirty sevens. They all had four spaces in between. Them. It was great. <laughs> right, twenty six inch box, sucker, box, yeah, box but I guarantee you, all four screws were in them. I'm like that oh, last. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, no, those those are great distressors. I like a lot. Um, I don't know. I I've really been trying to see how much I can just get out of a channel strip before I need to get into into compressing it. Like through the um, yeah. there's some really neat SSL plugins um, that sound really cool, and uh, there's a a guy named Stephen Slate who does awesome stuff. Like he's he's one of the really big guys for drum replacement, and he just came out with I think it's um, Virtual Console, something like that. Where oh yeah, it's a channel strip, and you can choose in between the modeling between a Trident console, a SSL, uh, an API, and a Neve console. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it it just it does like it's a very subtle difference, but you notice it. It's it's sometimes it's that it factor that you just can't get. Recording in a box. He's talking about yeah. plugins now, kids. But sorry, <laughs> but a, a lot of that, like, if you can get a really nice, you know, somebody that can control their dynamic really well. Sometimes it's nice to have that. You do it in thirty-two bit instead, but um, to give it that kind of natural dynamic and see what you can get without compressing the balls out of something. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's that's the trick. Uh, I've heard of guys mixing like big, huge dynamic projects and using hardly anything out of the box because they were sitting behind an SSL or a Neve, and they knew they could get all the compression they needed. I, once things were, you know, tracked and right, uh, down right. to the stems, but at the, during the final mix down, you used hardly anything. Just got the compression they needed by driving the console, which, uh-huh. as long as you're not on a Yamaha, works pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, you mentioned rack screws. Pet peeve of mine, if you're going to put stuff in a rack and only use two screws, for dang sakes, kids, don't do diagonal corners. Do the two bottom ones. <laughs> if you do a top corner and a bottom corner, the weight of the thing racks it, and then whatever display or card or whatever is mounted to the back of the faceplate eventually cracks, and then your gear shot. If you put the two bottom screws in, the weight of the unit will hold the... It's not going to tip out and, and fall out forward. You just need to keep it from yeah. falling down on the racks. So if life, you're only yeah. doing two, yeah. just put them in the two bottom holes. Trust me, the world won't end, and so help me God, if I find another drywall screw in a set oh. of rack ears, I am coming after people. I don't know who I'm coming after. I will somehow oh, you'll, you'll sit you my, out and my, beat you. My front of house rack, where they're just like, ah, oh, these rack screws won't line up, so they put a uh, particle board sheets in between the rack and just drilled that. Awesome! Wow. Awesome. <laughs> I can't even put dry, or I can't put rack screws in my front of house rack. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a tap and die set if you really need it, Anthony. Uh, all right, well that's probably a good place to end it before we just get ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And I got to be getting home too. It's getting late. So anyway, thanks to everybody the world over for listening. Appreciate it. That is, if the analytics are to be believed, yeah. <laughs> it might all be. And remember, guy from Russia, send us a post in Russian. <gasps> yeah, we should, we should come up with a prize. I wonder how much it costs to send something to Russia. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I can't... Your de- freedom. I can't... De- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you... <laughs> they still have the post office over there. If you're, yeah, if you're, uh, if you're in Russia and you need to get to the screwed. States, one of our junior members will marry you so that you can get a green card. No, <laughs> but no actually, first... I, I, I vote Chachi has to do that. First person from Russia uh, gets their picture on the blog. We'll say, I can do that for you at least. Um, 
I got. I want to take a look too. I want to hit. I'm, I'm kind of collecting. I'm like a ham radio operator here, trying to get a contact in every, all 50 states. So yeah, I want to. I got to look up what states we're lacking that we don't have any listeners in, and see if we can drum up a few. But uh, anyway, that's just a little weirdness for me because I obsess about things like this. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> If you're out there listening, thank you very much. We love it so much that you're uh, listening into our little talks and hopefully laughing along at all the same jokes and thinking about the stuff that we're thinking about. We would love your comments. Uh, let us know what you like, what you think sucks, if you have ideas for topics, if you would like to join us. If you're in the area, uh, we could we could come to you maybe. It would sure be easy for you to come to us. Or uh, We actually we got shot down by Skype last week, but um, uh, we have had good luck with Skype and, and other platforms doing remotes. Um, so if you'd like to... Contribute, hang out, got ideas, whatever. We, we would love to hear it all. And what else? Um, this is where I need to have stuff written down. But <laughs> you just need a secretary. You'll be fine. We really do. We're getting old. Um, and I have the white hairs in my beard to prove it. I shaved mine off. Yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's yeah. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and wrap here. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. Look for that that article from uh, from Lucy. She had some cool stuff to say. Uh, what else? Uh, I don't know. I'm just tune in next week for a fight over the Behringer console and perhaps some processing power. <laughs> yeah, we are finally going to talk. And uh, you know, it may. Why don't we just put it off a couple more weeks? Wait till they actually release it, and then we'll go steal one from Guitar Center. Oh, yeah, and there we go. Take it out and flog it somewhere. Yeah. Although I I did actually read a post from oh, a guy in Germany. Oh, space on it. <laughs> It's on your credit card, whatever. <laughs> Not mine. You plugged it in and it blew up. <laughs> with 30 Nike days. Damn space heater. Are these supposed to come with Nike footprints all over them? <laughs> all I can ask that, is, man. why would you label an amplifier iNuke? That just means it melted down. That's bad. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we, we can all agree that not everything Nerds makes. In fact, most of the stuff they make is not stuff that you want once you've attained a certain level. But it... <laughs> It's entry level stuff, and I'm I'm currently entry level at the digital realm with my own stuff. Anyway, I, I can at least back it up by saying that by this time next year, I hope to be mixing on a Soundcraft VI4 <laughs> for my day job. So suck on that, haters. <laughs> uh, but anyway, wrapping it up. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Yeah, I thanks. Think you could have been mixing on for three months. <laughs> by the way, hey Carol, thanks for uh, not taking that back because it almost ended up on my truck like ten times. Well, that was an SI. Well, hey, <laughs> still <laughs> take what you got. Right? Pretty <laughs> nice. All right, we're wrapping it up now. Uh, tune in next week when we'll be talking about who knows what with who knows who, but we'll be talking about something. Actually, yeah, well, I'll have I'll have a road gig to tell about, and uh, so many awful things can happen to us in Philadelphia in one night. Yeah, in in twenty hours, it's going to be. All I'm going to say is bring some real outlets with you, on like the GFC as I had to do with last weekend. Oh, it'll, it'll be a hotel ballroom, so you know we'll, we'll be. Oh, sharing. so you're going to have ninety two volts again? We'll bring be, UPSs. Yeah, well, we should, well, all that <laughs> stuff's class H, so whatever. Yeah. Class class D power supply is class H. Class class. Never mind. Quest, quest class, love, if you're in the area, we'd like to see you. We'd love to see you. We'd love to take you down to get a... What's the place you got to go for a cheesesteak? I don't know. He can tell us when we get there. Uh, we're yeah. rambling. We're still rambling. Yeah. I'm trying to wrap it up, guys. So anyway... Oh, speaking of the ramble. <laughs> uh, let's, let, us, <laughs> let us not speak of the ramble until the ramble actually comes around. Uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week when we'll be talking about something or other, if we're still here. And that is a wrap. <laughs>